Another topic that comes into play when multiple uh, forests end up getting connected together has to do with the actual SIDS on each individual object in each domain. In fact, the SIDS, you've, you've probably dealt with SIDS before. Uh, the SIDS are a mechanism for identifying uniquely each of the objects that can exist in a domain. And if I run here, the uh, an admin console here for Windows PowerShell, I can show you a way to uh, actually access what the SIDS are for a variety of different objects. Let me do get ad user uh, dash filter star so we can see all the objects. And then let me just select a couple of different uh, fields here. Sam, account name, and then the SID value. That should populate for me here the different user accounts that exist in this domain and then the SID values that are associated with them. These SID values, again, unique identifiers for the, uh, for the account that exists in this domain. SIDs, as you may know, are the actual, the, the, these are the actual object that uh, Windows and Active Directory references when it thinks of your user account. To, for, to Active Directory, your user account is the SID value, not necessarily the name that's associated with it. Now, anytime you have multiple different uh, forests that are attached together through a trust, it is possible for that SID, val SID information to get sent across to the other half of the forest as a mechanism to identify who you are. But today, in with Server 2012 and 2012R2, there's actually a SID filtering that will occur by default on all existing external trusts. SID filtering is a good idea because under some circumstances it can be possible for a, a rogue administrator to compromise a domain controller in a trusted domain and actually use the, the SID history attribute to associate an existing hit SID with a new user account and potentially grant themselves unauthorized rights. Now the problem, however, is that SID history and the, uh, the variety of SIDs that it can be attached to a user account is also helpful for domain object migrations. So in order to do SID, to turn on SID history, and in order to really be able to migrate objects from one domain to another, you have to turn off SID filtering. Now the exam objective here has to do with SID filtering itself, but the, really what you're talking about here is the commands that are required in order to disable this feature that is automatically enabled by default. And the only time that you would accomplish that is when you're going through a domain object migration to another forest, to another domain that you already trust, you have a high degree of trust in. The only thing you really need to know here is the fact that there is a couple of commands that you'll need to do in order to disable SID filtering, which enables you to then do SID history. And I will show you what those commands are here. Let me just pop them here into the command prompt. The first of which is netdom trust, the trusting domain name being the trusted domain name, the quarant quarantine to know, and then the user being the domain administrator account, and then the password. This is the command that you would use on an external trust. This is slightly different than the command that you would use on a forest trust. And if I do a little copy and paste here, the command that you would do on a forest trust is the following. Net dom trust, trusting domain, there's the domain. Enable SID history equals yes, and then the username and password. So again, I'm kind of just showing you these because they're something that you could be tested on, but recognize that configuring SID filtering here just really means what are the commands that you need to know in order to disable SID filtering.